Hey guys, Arius Comics here. So today I'm gonna do a special thing. So we're gonna do uh, two stories of Batman 112. So first off, we have Batman. Uh, am I really Batman? You know, and uh, this story kind of ties up in the Black Case book. But we're gonna have another one after this one that um, I found very, very interesting and with a lot of potential. So if you just want to go through the Black Case book, you can stop after the, the, the story is done. But if you, you'll stick around towards the end, you're going to find something very interesting, I promise. So uh, we start off with, am I really Batman? When we see Bruce Wayne in the Batman costume confronting uh, Bruce Wayne in, uh, you know, normal attire. Um, and um, the Batman on the left, the one in the um, Batman costume, said, Don't you recognize me, Dick? I'm Bruce Wayne, Batman. And Dick goes, No, you're not a real Bruce Wayne, and the real Bruce Wayne is not Batman. So, we just open up with um, Batman waking up and not feeling any motivation at all. And he wakes up in a padded cell. Um, this is the cover, uh, fa the fame Lao Man asked the biggest question of his life, am I really Batman? Uh, and the Batman on the right thinks, what's happened if I'm not, not Batman, who am I? And then the second Batman, there's the Batman who thinks he's Batman officer, but this is the real Batman next to me, says uh, Dick Grayson. And uh, we go back to the cell here, uh, Batman calls out the guard, uh, what am I doing here, let me out. The guard goes, sure, you're Batman. Uh, the other guy over there, he's Napoleon. And Batman goes, great Scott, I'm in a mental institution. And I've never really seen, <laughs> you know, great Scott used non-ironically before. Like, even if I've seen it used, like, not with a wink-wink or, like, obvious satire, if it, the work took itself a bit seriously, it was still, like, a funny thing. So it was kind of, like normal in like the fiction world but like it was meant for us the audience to like find it funny and you know uh laugh at how people spoke like what seven years ago and um we go with the terrible thought that rouses batman into a near frenzy um the fact that he's uh, in a mental institution and uh he kind of kisses the guard of everything and there they show him the real uh batman and robin and uh, he can't really believe it. It's it's incredible for him. He figures out it's a plot. Something's happening. Um, the guards and psychologists kind of try to get him. He jumps out the window. The police come in. And he thinks, how could all of this happen? The last thing I remember was capturing that renegade scientist, Professor Marlowe. That's all I remember. What happened after that? So we have some mystery over here. Kind of. You know, one of those questions that, uh, one of those answers that gives rise to more questions than uh, answers. Um, they're coming at him from both sides, so he jumps in the river. Uh, he finds his way to Wayne Manor. Um, he confronts Dick, but then uh, Bruce Wayne comes. Um, he recognizes Dick's birthmark, so it's obvious it's not like, you know, imposters. Uh, look, I saw Bruce get that nick on his cheek while shaving two days ago. That proof is Bruce Wayne, because you don't have that nick. And Bruce, like Batman, doesn't understand. Um, they kind of try to apprehend him. He wins the fight. He goes off and kind of tries to slip it off um, over here. And he doesn't really figure this plot point um, that's kind of, you know, going to play a part a bit later. Maybe I'd be safe to remove my costume. No, that wouldn't help. The imposter must have told the police I resemble him. They recognize me anyhow. Um, I feel so tired as if I don't care anymore. I'm tired of fighting, tired of running. Maybe I have lost my mind. Maybe I should be locked up. And then there's this crooks and Batman um, beats him and thinks this is the way he's gonna, um, you know, convince the police. He's the real Batman, but he sees uh, his impersonator Robin that have come to um, investigate the same crime scene. So he hides in the Batmobiles. Um, back and uh, then he just props up and figures out they couldn't really tell the police um, he's Batman because then they would you know figure out Bruce Wayne is Batman even though that's kind of a stretch um, 
So he figures out by uh, going after that, that uh, Batman, uh, his imposter is someone who knows that Batman and Bruce Wayne are the same person. And um, Robin says, we shouldn't realized, uh, we should have realized we can announce Mark you Batman, but you can explain now that 24 hours have passed. And this is the point where the answers come in. So Alfred was really posing as Batman. And the reason for that is that this Professor Milo, this uh, villain of, of Batman, had uh, his room filled with a gas made from a rare Amazon plant uh, because he ha it has a unique effect of losing the desire to live. And he just, you know, someone who like takes the gas in just uh, listlessly lies, refusing to eat and eventually dies. But, Batman, uh, but Robin has this rare plants book and um, if the patient can be given the desire to live and is kept moving at the end of 24 hours, you'll recover. So this is one of those like very, very golden age plots. Um, I did this comic book story arc on the origin of uh, Riddler and it had this kind of, he wanted to like uh, steal this Stradivarius, which I felt it was very, very, you know, a golden age because it was kind of a silly thing like to you know rob a Stradivarius like who does that you know and like you don't need to be like a costume supervillain you know to do that you can just do it normally like but I felt like it was a very um a very a story very much from that period from this period the golden age but what really happens is you have I feel kind of two stories so you have that kind of stories, but then you have stories that kind of stretch it, you know, a lot. So this is one of those which combines like a bit of, you know, biological um, science, you know, the plants having effect, gases, blah, blah, blah. And uh, you stretch it out till it becomes something cartoonish, which is if the patient can be given the desire to live as it, and he's kept moving, he's cured at the end of 24 hours. Like, no, nothing like, really works like that. Um, so I feel there's like that's why I came back to to seeing um, the bit about the Riddler. It's like two kind of stories in the Golden Age is is what I'm trying to say. It's like the cartoonish but somewhat believable ones, and then the cartoonish but very outlandish ones. So this one fa falls in the in the latter one. Um, then uh, Robin, after figures out that, talks to the commissioner, talks to Alfred. Um, Commissioner goes to the police and talks with them and also the asylum uh, people um, They can explain the whole plan again to Batman and this is where we get the signal man So if you don't care about another golden age story that's not related to the um, Black case book you can stop here. This has nothing to do But if you want to continue this is very interesting because the signal man of crime Has this like look at this. It's, this is amazing so we have here um Kind of a, a tapestry of different uh, constellations and we have here the signal man on top of the libra sign and throwing the the uh, arrow of the sagittarius at batman so our story starts on the outskirts of godman uh, gotham city uh, where one day phil cobb small time crook with big ideas um gets to gotham city and he has a suit and suitcase and a hat and you know how you know Normal people go to Gotham is like walking and you're pretty much in the countryside because you have the hills over here uh, Lots of vegetation. You have like houses rural kind of houses uh, You know kind of like a door-to-door -door salesman uh, He tries to go into the mob, but nobody really knows him. He has no reputation He's told to, like get out of here Which he does so he's waiting for a sign basically and uh what sign he gets is the bat signal. Uh, and he thinks it's to himself, the signal, that's the answer. Like the joke and the penguin, I'll make a quick reputation as a criminal because I'll be unique, but I'll be smarter than them. I won't get caught. So later there's another uh, signal up and Commissioner Gordon gets this message, which he gives to Batman. I'm challenging you to a battle of wits. See if you can follow the sign to my robbery tonight and stop me if you can. Sign the signal man. Um, it's one of those cheap hoodlums who think they can make a reputation for himself by was modern law, says uh, Commissioner Gordon. So there's a broom and an atomic sign. So you're kind of like flabbergasted by this. Um, 
A broom, the sign of the atom. What does the sign of the broom mean? Clean sweep of crime? Clean sweep? Hmm, I wonder, thanks Batman. Later, a strange figure secrets himself in the shadows of the balcony of the hobby show. Wow, that's that's an interesting uh, sentence right there. Um, Salem is very, very sure. They're not going to understand his uh, signal. A broom and atomic sign. Reader, can you decipher those clues? Uh, you can't really. They're, they're like random. Um, so what he does, pulls the fire alarm. Everyone goes out. There's pretty much a diversion. But there's... Um, the show's prize exhibit, a pure jade model of the atomic submarine. Now, Dilly, so, uh, Robin, can't you read the sign? It says, do not touch. So that's like a pun I feel like they would use today. The signal man, there's a sign, do not touch. You know, the signal man is uh, trying to uh, steal something from a museum. I feel that pun would be used today. So in a way, comic books are eternal. So then Batman goes out of the cuckoo clock. Uh, and uh, he, he kind of uh, figured it out. So Batman, you knew that a broom is holstered. It's hoisted on a new submarine after a successful first run, a sign of a clean sweep. Um, but he leaps, uh, escaping Batman. Batman follows, uh, goes through. There's two doors, one exit, broom closet, and like one next to each other. You know who who the like where the hell do you find this? Um, upon opening the door, Batman bursts into the broom closet. So signal man switched the signs between before uh, coming in. He gets uh, a lot of press. Uh, then there's a new clue at uh, Commissioner Gordon's office: a fir tree and two astronomical signs. Uh, Batman figures this out too. It's customary for builders to hoist a fir tree atop a newly constructed skyscraper, a sign that it has grown. The astronomical symbols represent Earth and Mars. He must intend to pull a crime at the newly built observatory, says Robin. Notice, Robin, that the planets are close together. Earth and Mars were closest last year. It couldn't happen now, but there is one place that can reproduce that sky spectacle. Let's go. Reader, can you guess what Batman means? Man, I love when, when the old comics go like this. I don't, I don't know why. I know it kind of pulls you out of the story, but I don't know. If you feel closer to the whole thing. Um, I feel like this last part uh, is not really necessary, the planets being closer together and blah blah blah. Because, uh, I mean, you, you know, it's the first thing you'd think. It's like an observatory. It even says, um, Robin even says that. So, oh, oh this page is again. Huh, I wonder why. Um, so, we're. At the exhibit hall, signal man scales a zodiac sign, a Libra the balance, simply scale in my favor. Uh, so what happened, they kind of tussle and like uh, one of the exhibits kind of falls on Batman and giving him like an edge, signal man an edge. And he throws the Sagittarius um, arrow at Robin, uh, you know, in the cover it's, he throws it at Batman, but you know, in the issue he throws it at Robin. Uh, he goes atop of the observatory and he has a shoot. And uh, he gets even more pressed because he escaped Batman the second time. He sends another uh, sign. It's a black a pirate flag. Uh, and uh, this is where kind of the story falls apart. Uh, he basically leaves Batman and Robin on, on like a ship which is rigged to explode. There's this friendly uh, ship that comes to... Batman and Robin like anchor like some sign for hospitality, explain the situation, get out, the ship goes boom. Signal Man steals Batman uh, and Robin's uh, bat ship, I guess you could call it. Um, and uh, they cannot, you know, be like the speeds are the difference is way, way too big. So they, he couldn't get caught, basically. Um, I'm mean, say the story kind of falls apart for two reasons. So he could have used misdirection and sent them on, you know, the boat and he could like do anything in the town, you know, steal something else. He doesn't do that. The second reason why is because the story again comes to abrupt finish. So you read this issue and I was really drawn into it. I was like, man, this is so interesting, honestly. And it's kind of like a smooth driving, like we have the atmosphere, we kind of have the music, uh, you're getting into it, you're, it's a scenic drive. 
you're you're going but you don't really have to be anywhere at you know you don't have a schedule uh, you're just going enjoying and then bam you stop uh, that's how i felt this, this story went in terms of uh, pacing so um it, he goes fast the launch uh scrap to get something it stopped the frantic of the signalman tries to free the trap craft unaware of the uh caped swimmer approaching <laughs> that's batman imagine him just like swimming toward this guy and like you're you're this guy and you're just staying there man he's gonna catch me i mean batman pre presume because he's in good shape he can swim fast but like it takes a while you know <laughs> i mean that's that's a pretty funny sight uh, a bellboy signpost of the sea which warns of show so this is how he gets caught and there's another sign a sign that the signalman's crime career has come to an end uh, and so shortly after the dream of Phil Cobb, alias Signalman's Phil, he does get a gang in prison. And, ah, my man, I, I really like Signalman. Um, he's a bit of a Riddler. Actually, he's a bit of a character that kind of is himself a bit of the Riddler. So you have Riddler who's upset with the clues and he, you know, does rhymes with them or whatever. And he's obsessed with proving himself smarter than Batman. And then there's another guy called Clue Master. So Clue Master has kind of the same thing, uh, only a bit different. He doesn't really want to be seen as this extremely smart guy who fooled uh, Batman, the world's greatest detective. Nah, he just has like a condition that makes him leak clues. Uh, it's weird. The best part is that uh, he gets cured of it. And then it gets interesting. Um, his name is Arthur Brown, and we're gonna read more about him. And uh, he's interesting as a villain too. He's like a serious villain, but what's interesting is his daughter. And we'll get to that. We'll get to that. So Signalman is kind of the Clue Master. Well, the Clue Master hasn't been invented yet, but you know what I mean. At this point, like Clue Master is probably an 80s villain or a 70s villain. So this is like 1950s, 60s at most. Uh, so I don't think. Uh, Clue Master appeared yet. Doesn't matter, you know what I mean. So, uh, uh, honestly, why did I read this issue? Uh, well, this story, you know, you remember how I told you that issues back in the day, they had like multiple stories. So you have like a 60 or 70 page comic or even more. And you'd have like two or three stories and you have like, you know, other comics in between, like uh, in between these stories is like, a, a bunch of short comics like a few panels long and i started reading the you know other batman but this is the story it starts so even though the cover says you know the other batman or a real batman or whatever it's titled this is the story it really starts with so i i read it and i completely forgot about the cover because i got so drawn into it and then i started doing the video and saw the cover again i'm like I kind of forgot to read the important story, so I figured I'd, I'd read to you guys the the story from the Black Case book, and then I would go with this, just because I liked it so much and I wanted to show it to you guys, and uh, I, I tried to make it easy, so if you want to just want to follow the Black Case book, you can stop, I mean, I, I told you guys when to stop, but if you made it this far, I'm proud of you, I'm really proud of you. Uh, let me think what uh, let me know what you think about both stories uh, honestly i like this one much more even though it has like a bad ending like i told you like usually it ends on the last page or like the last few panels but this was a good story i feel a lot of potential in this uh, i don't know if single man has been used in the post crisis continuity at all i hope there's like someone uh, who used him because there's so much potential to go with him here honestly uh, if not, I hope he does get kind of reused at some point because I, I feel there's more to tell of uh, Phil Cobb. Uh, but guys, uh, please leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Comment on either of the stories um, what your thoughts are about the Golden Age. I hope I give you a little bit more appreciation and I hope I do that with every video in this series. And uh, please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.